This uh, lecture is on uh, data recording and uh, signal uh, transmission. As you know, in uh, machinery condition monitoring, it is very important that we get the data out of this machine and then uh, record it so that we can do the signal analysis on it. Well, so what is the format of recording is what we are going to discuss in this class. What are the methods to record such an signal and then uh, how do you do the analysis. You all recall uh, that in uh, computer aided data acquisition, we uh, notice the importance of sampling frequency and then you know the number of data points. This plays an important role in the selection of the data recording media or format. Well, before we come to this uh, idea, I would like to uh, tell you something about the traditional techniques of data recording. Well, <coughs> you all must have uh, visited certain um, plants, could be a power plant, could be a steel plant. So, they have a control room in which I am mean, talking about uh, things in the industry about you know. 3 4 decades ago and then all they had were lot of analog meters essentially rms or peak meters and data logging was done by plant personnel this was the format of data recording maybe a couple of decades ago. Okay. But now, what they were doing there is as a function of time, they would note down the parameters like the current drawn by a motor, maybe the temperature of the bearing, maybe the supply voltage. Okay. And this time mind you was maybe you know every every maybe every 30 minutes. So, every in, in hours say. And this was being done by a human being. And if there was an and this is this should be the log sheets they would essentially form the log sheets and then uh, and these were uh, available in the plant room and then if there was an abnormality at certain conditions people would go back to a certain date and look into the log sheet of the plant and then try to come to a conclusion like what went wrong and so on or suddenly if uh, in the plant uh, operator notices that the temperature is suddenly rising Okay, is increasing, then they would set an alarm uh, condition and then people would take precautionary measurements as to how to reduce uh, this kind of uh, abnormal behavior of the machine or how do you control them. But <coughs> there were a lot of problems with this, this was a completely manual mode. Okay, there are problems in which human errors could creep in because of wrong recording, wrong writing, wrong reading. This was one possible. Another was it was tiring 
and uh, cumbersome because you know visually you have to read all the meters in the control room and in the control rooms could be you know panels of uh, uh, meters and so on and this was a very uh, cumbersome and tedious process and then there are a lot of chances by which errors could creep in and uh, you know there are been instances where people have reported that because of a wrong reading recorded by a person the interpretation was wrong and then the uh, analysis of the prognosis was not correct. Well, uh, another method was you know, there were other than write, uh, writing. So, the first one was a human intervention with physical data logging, but closely with this is using a either a printer or a strip chart recorder. These are the analog okay, and wherein uh, there will be just a voltage signal coming out because of the parameter and then with time basically there will be a paper roll. Okay which will be moving at a certain speed v meters per second and then there will be pens on this and they will be writing the or plotting the parameters and this would be on the roll. Okay. Okay, and this is essentially uh, what is a strip chart recorder and then people used to have such large rolls of data wherein we can look into the problem and then find out get basically a time history of the signal by looking at the strip chart recorders. And some of these uh, data logging meters used to have you know trip set tripping levels or alarm levels set preset that means when the alarm level increased or the signal level increased beyond the set level it would trigger an alarm and this was what was the traditional method of uh, I would say data recording. But as you can see the problem with this kind of data recording is uh, if I was to this down one was a uh, lot of scope of human error it is manual thus tedious time consuming it is not real time it is difficult to difficult to obtain past data because then one has to uh, physically pull out the log sheets and that would be cumbersome and then because of large amount of uh, writings archiving or storage issues present. Okay. 
Now, because of this disadvantages, since the 60s, people have started to use other means of recording and that was the machine mode and first would be a tape recorder. Okay, like like the spool or the cassette. Of course, cassette came much later, and the the stool, uh, spool type tape recorder. Okay, now we will look into these different types of tape recorders, and then what is the present format of tape recorder, and how we do the digital recording in such uh, tape recorders. So, if I was to look into the different uh, formats of uh, data recording available today. One could be the analog recording or the digital recording. What happens in the analog recording? We used to have the direct recording uh, method, wherein on a cassette or a tape recorder or a spool type tape recorder, the data was stored because of the hysteresis in the ferritic tape, because the, the signal would be converted basically essentially we have a voltage signal, which is a time varying or an AC voltage. this could be my voltage signal which has to be recorded. Now, because of this varying voltage there will be a uh, magnetic flux uh, created when the signal is recorded through the head of the tape recorder. So, we have a magnetic head and then the tape is made to go at a particular speed okay, and the take up spool and the uh, home spool okay. and they go at a particular uh, speed and uh, some of them could be 6.77 inch per second and this is the value of the industry format then it was in the inch per second uh, speed linear speed and this is dependent on the rpm you know we used to have the old uh, lps at you know 45 rpm or uh, 33 and one third rpm etc so these are the particular uh, speeds at which these uh, things used to run of course in the i'm not talking about the lp spools because in lp spools what happens the data once stored cannot be erased or uh, changed okay but we are not talking about the LP spools in this case, we are talking about in head, wherein because of the magnetism in the introduced in the ferritic tape, the data could be stored. And then of course, we, we also have the possibility of having an erase head. If the erase head is there, you could demagnetize it and then the tape, uh, the information stored in the tape could be removed. But the advantages or disadvantages of this kind of systems are, this had a very poor uh, dynamic range. By dynamic range I define as the highest recorded signal level to the lowest recorded signal level okay. and they were also having a frequency limit.
like an upper limit or a lower limit. And traditionally, these these uh, magnetic tapes had a very very uh, low upper limit, could be as low as 10 hertz and maybe as high as maybe 12 kilohertz, so on. And this later on improved with the type of tapes. You know, there were metal tapes, chromium tapes, etc., wherein uh, this could be uh, go up to maybe 70, 17 kilohertz. But traditionally, this uh, direct recording tape recorders were used mis, mis, um, mostly for recording audio signals. And as you know, the audio signals are in the range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And uh, these uh, recorders did a good job in uh, recording such audio signals or for that matter any signals which had which were in this frequency range. So, when you are talking about machinery condition monitoring, we uh, we could be recording uh, signals from uh, noise or acoustics sound signals vibration signals and maybe temperature signals or certain process parameters like pressure etcetera. And our requirement is that with each device we have to either reproduce the original signal, but the problem is this direct recording was data storage, because once we store it in a magnetic media, there is a every possibility ch possible chance that in a magnetic environment uh, they may deteriorate. The physical tape may get corrupted because of moisture, high temperature etcetera. You must have seen if you are at home, if you store your uh, old then if you ever have your old spool tapes or cassette tapes stored elsewhere, you will see if you uh, do not care about the moisture around you know there will be a lot of fungi formation on those tapes and then there will be uh, you will lose the signal quality etcetera. And these are the problems and of course, from a signal processing point of view the major problem is it cannot record the low frequency signal. But you know, in these early 70s or the late 60s, these spool type uh, direct recording tape recorders were quite popular because that was the only technology available then, and they were doing fairly a good job with uh, recording uh, audio signals, particularly in you know, music music recordings, etc. Of course, if you want to then have a permanent uh, recording in the media, uh, people use this uh, uh, the record uh, record player you know, the records the lp records or the ep records etc wherein permanently the song tracks could be cast and uh, kept in those vinyl discs okay but we are not talking about you know we obviously cannot uh, store data because data has to be recovered uh, for our analysis and we do not want to record it permanently in a recording media, so that the provision of erasing was not possible in the LP records or the EP records, but in the direct recording by having the serial head we could have always uh, reduced uh, uh, erased the data recorded. Then the coming back to the next uh, format of recording that is the FM recording that is the frequency modulated recording. 
the FM recordings are uh, very popular and convenient because they can measure as low as DC and then can go as high as I mean, 12 kilohertz etcetera. So, low frequency low frequency recording are possible by the FM recording. Of course, the recording media could ag again be a spool or a cassette tape and so on, but the advantage is the low frequency recording could be done and it has a relatively high dynamic range. So, this was uh, popular from the maybe from the uh, 70s to the maybe maybe mid 80s uh, people used to use this FM recording for uh, recording the uh, signals this is from mid or mid 70s to 80s people were doing the FM recording. But then this later on uh, from mid 80s we have come up with this format of pulse code modulation recording which we are uh, essentially a high frequency recording uh, used in the you know, in the video recording people use the same uh, pulse code modulation technique which was used in video recording for recording audio signals and uh, people then use them in uh, dat recorders or digital audio tape recorders and these are quite popular uh, till uh, very recently maybe maybe till about you know, late or maybe I would say till the year 2000 they were very popular digital uh, data recorders okay and uh, the advantage of this data recorders are they are DC to about 20 kilohertz range, high dynamic range, compact and so on. Okay. If you will see here, I have just made a comparison in this slide on the data recording methods by the direct recording, the frequency modulator recording, the digital recording. The lower frequency limit in direct recording is about 20 hertz, upper limit is 20 kilohertz. Noise floor is 10 millivolts, that means you cannot record any signal less than 10 millivolts. Dynamic range is very poor, 40 decibels and time compensation is not available. Whereas in frequency modulation recording, I can go as low as DC or you know, 0.1 hertz to about 12 kilohertz. Of course, this has improved lately. Again, noise floor is uh, 10 millivolt, um, but then we can have a very, very high dynamic range of 80 decibels and time compensation is possible. The digital audio recording or the DAT format which we use can have a low frequency limit of DC and then the high limit, high frequency limit is 20 kilohertz noise floor is uh, 0.1 millivolt and 100 decibels. But uh, the advantages of the digital recording over the other recording is that um, the noise floor uh, being very, very low, we can uh, have signals from devices like thermocouples. As you know, thermocouples give a very, very low millivolt signal, okay, as opposed to maybe an uh, accelerometer.
may be 10 millivolt ok. And if I was to for a good compare these are basically low frequency signals. and these are relatively high frequency signals. Okay. Now, having a signal less than or around 0 0.1 millivolt, it would be very difficult to measure either by FM or direct coding, but you have a digital audio tape, you could record such low signals in low frequency as well as high values and at high frequencies, because they have a high dynamic range and then low noise flow. But all these three types of tape recorders are available in the market. I mean of course, you know it will be very difficult for you to find a digital uh, uh, sorry a direct recorder or an FM tape recorder uh, with a spool or the cassette nowadays. But even uh, finding a DAT recorder could be difficult at times because you know nowadays people are using the DVD recorders or totally uh, recording in, in a uh, flash card or a compact media or, or even uh, writing it straight to the hard disk of the device. Okay. But uh, the advantages of these recorders are they are portable. low power consumption. Some of these uh, recorders can be even powered from the 12 volt uh, DC adapter given in your car. So, the mobility of such recorders is excellent. Because why do we have this data recorders in the first place? We have this data recorders because uh, we cannot possibly go to the plant, maybe the plant is a coal mine, a very dusty environment. We cannot go and sit next to a crusher or a, a grinding mill and do the vibration analysis as to find out the remaining useful life of this crusher or the grinding mill. Rather, have the transducers mounted around the grinding mill or the crusher and then record the signal on a tape recorder and then this tape recorder obviously has to be portable, has to be lightweight, could be powered by any source and then once we have recorded it in a particular media, we can bring this tape recorder back to our laboratory wherein we can do the signal analysis and try to find out the condition of this machine. It is not that the tape recorder is uh, fixed or tape recorder is always there in the lab. No, this is not the objective of our recording here. Our recording in condition based maintenance or monitoring is to be have a big steel plant for that matter next to you sitting in your analysis uh, office. Okay. Obviously, I cannot bring a steel plant to my office. But if I have recorded the signals in a tape recorder which reproduces the signals as they were recorded or as they were measured right at the steel pan, my job is done. And with that objective, actually, we are recording this uh, uh, signals, and then we will see what are the advantages of using a portable recorder with high dynamic range where the data can be stored for long, long of time. So, right in the beginning of this class, I told you about the importance of two factors. One is the sampling frequency and other is the uh, number of data points. Okay. If you will recall, because I need to do signal analysis. That means, if I have a signal like this, some signal, this has to be sampled 
at a fixed interval. This has to be fixed at the sampling interval and the total time of this data total time is t is equal to n times delta t. <coughs> this t is equal to n times delta t where n is the number of data points. In the previous diagram all those crosses I had done they were actually the locations of the sampled digital data. Okay. So, in terms of the storage memory requirement, because this digital data has to be stored in some memory location in the digital recording. Now, if <coughs> every data requires 16 bits bits or 2 bytes of memory space, okay. suppose uh, I am sampling at f s is equal to maybe 100 kilohertz. Okay. That means, delta t is equal to 1 by 100 kilohertz. So, 1000 10 to the power minus 5 seconds is my sampling interval. And <coughs> if I was to find out the total time is equal to n times delta t, n is equal to the total time by delta t. Okay. Now, if I want to I want to record 10 minutes of data at a sampling frequency of 100 kilohertz, my number of data which has to be stored is 10 minutes 10 into 60 seconds into 1 by delta t, which is uh, 1 by 10 to the power minus 5, that is 600 into 10 to the power 5 data points. Now, if every data point requires 2 bytes, I will require the memory required to store 10 minutes of data sampled at 100 kilohertz in a 16 bit recorder would be 2 into 600 into 10 to the power 5 bytes. Okay, I would uh, though no 1 uh, kilobyte is equal to 1024 bytes. If I approximate it as you know maybe for the sake of discussions may be 10 to the power 3 bytes. So, the memory required would be 2 into 600 into 10 to the power 5 that is equal to about uh, 1220 into 10 to the power 6 approximately 120 megabytes 
M B, though I have used an approximate that one uh, kilobyte is thousand byte. That is not quite right, but just for the sake of this discussion, it's actually one zero two four bytes. Okay, so approximately uh, the to summarize to store ten minutes of data sample at 100 kilohertz in a 16 bit digital recorder would require approximately 100 120 megabyte of digital memory okay now you can now multiply now if you want to instead of 10 minutes you want to make it 100 minutes there will be another extra zero coming here if you want to sample at a uh, still higher frequencies you know your uh, the because n is equal to t by t by delta t or t times f s. Okay. If your sampling frequency is increased, n would increase. If your time is increased, n would increase. So, depending on that, you can do a calculation and then try to understand what is the uh, amount of memory required. But in digital recording, the most limiting factor is the sampling frequency. In digital recorders, depending on our frequency of interest or depending on the frequency of interest, we can have this sampling frequency decided from the Shannon sampling theorem. Now, suppose uh, we are talking about a mechanical signals basically in the audio range from 0 to 20 kilohertz, maybe we, we sample at sampling frequency f s is equal to 44.1. 1 kilohertz and this is a set sampling frequency and then we can uh, record as much as we want provided we have the memory space. But nowadays there are very very high sampling uh, devices which can sample at about 100 mega samples per second. Okay. And this is the present state of the art is we can have a, a to d systems a to d card which can sample at about 100 mega samples per second. And then these high samplings are actually used for st studying ultrasonics because ultrasonics occur at frequency below or greater than 20 kilohertz or if you want to study about acoustic emission which occur from uh, anywhere from 2 to 5 megahertz. So, if I was to <coughs> record any ultrasonic signals or capture any acoustic emission phenomena, I have to be sampling at very, very high frequencies could be you know 100 megahertz and so on. And these A to D cards are uh, very costly, very difficult to find at times. Nevertheless, uh, nowadays uh, systems are coming in where such sampling devices are there and then we eventually we have to store this data in data recorder uh, data points and data points and from the previous example you just saw that by playing around with the number of data points uh, sorry by playing around with the sampling frequency and the time data uh, time which you require to record we can uh, increase the number of data points now, so how do such digital data recorder 
replace the conventional uh, no, you recall the analog uh, data recording people are doing by hand how does it replace how does it replace analog recording so in this uh, data logger which we will call i can decide frequency of storage may be continuously you know, and imagine I have a signal which is low frequency content and another which has high frequency content. Like the case of the thermocouple and the accelerometer. So, depending on my interest low frequency content could be sampled at a low frequency, high frequency content could be sampled at a higher frequency. The in the same data logger the number of input channels is also a very important characteristics. For example, you know, there are 16 channel recorders even there are 128 channel recorders and so on. Okay. That depends on the interest. Of course, uh, we uh, all the previous examples we have done with one channel. If simultaneously I want to record 16 channels of data or 128 channels of data, I need to also um, record them and multiply the number of data points by the small n where the n is small n is the number of channels. And this data points has to be stored in a memory, which is RAM memory, maybe. So, which could be erased, and then if you want to have a permanent record, you can write to a CD, DVD okay, or even put it in your hard disk or maybe also in a memory card or a device. Nowadays, you know you get cameras you know flash cards with you know 32 GB or 64 GB storage capacity. Okay. And these are traditionally you know compared to the data recording facilities we had in the 60s, wherein a typical spool or a cassette tape would at most have you know 60 minutes or 90 or 120 minutes of data could be stored. Okay, this was the duration of the spool cassette type 60, 90, 120. Obviously, we cannot do continuous uh, data recording over months in such uh, recording because of the limitation of the storage space. But now it is with such uh, compact memory cards with capacity of 32 or 64 GB you know 64 GB would, would last you uh, quite a uh, maybe you know I will just show you an example in the data recorder how this can be stored. If I come back here uh, this is a typical uh, data uh, channel recorder which we have in our laboratory. Uh, this is a this is where the digital cassette tape goes in and if you will see here there are 8 channels of input and 8 output channels and then you can record 
about 120 minutes of data in each tape at a maximum frequency of 20 kilohertz in each of the 8 channels. Okay. So, the number of channels times the frequency bandwidth is a constant in this kind of DAT recorders. So, it is 8 channels at 20 kilohertz okay. and then uh, you could be if you want to more make more channels if you want to make 16 channels it has to be sampled at 10 kilohertz and so on. Okay. So, this option can be uh, there are 32 channels at 5 kilohertz. Okay. But the limitations of such data recorders are I obviously cannot record for uh, months together recorder is not possible and then I obviously cannot uh, record at very very high frequencies maybe in megahertz. Okay. And then of course, again this has to be stored in that tapes which could be contaminated. So, of recently quite in, a, in the last maybe 5, 6 years people have using this digital data recorders like you see one which we have in our laboratory here you can have 16 channels of record and then you can give in uh, signals and for such a recorder you know, we can have very very high sampling frequencies and then we can uh, record lot of data points just give an example for this digital data recording with about 2 giga point of memory space there is a provision of changing the sampling rate okay 100 mega samples per second or 10 mega samples per second with single channel I can be recording at uh, 20 seconds of data 100 mega samples you know megahertz per second. So, very very high uh, sampling rate whereas you know even you know we were happy with 5 kilo samples per second even if you for a mechanical signal, uh, signal if you sample at 100 kilo samples per second with single channel you can record 5 hours of data. Okay. And if you are running a very very slow phenomena like monitoring temperatures 200 samples per second that itself is very very high while monitoring temperature you could be recording with single device for about days without worrying about your memory space about the repro reproducibility of such signals and, and so on. A very important point comes in this uh, recorders is the how do you determine the frequency response of the DAT recorder. You could also try this with the digital recorder. A simple way to do this is suppose we have a DAT recorder all you have to do is record a random noise signal at the input and then play back the signal output signal okay. and then simulate simultaneously plot this as a function of frequency 
playback signal by the input signal and you will see a frequency because if the playback has to be of the same level as the random noise signal and if you have recorded a random noise of a particular bandwidth you will see okay and in a db scale this should be 0 db this value because you know log of 1 is equal to 0. So, if playback is of the same level as the input signal it will be 1. So, it will be 0 decibels. So, this is the useful frequency limit of the signal. Okay. This check in a, a researcher actually does this, uh, but uh, it is a good idea to check it out if you have an FFT analyzer. You can also see the if you have an FFT analyzer, you can also see the phase response. So, the phase of the transfer function between the playback and the input okay. and this phase angle should also not vary and this is usually this phase angle typically are the of the order of 2 to 3 degrees. So, then you can see the frequency limit of the signal. Okay. So, the upper frequency limit is decided by doing such a small test using a random noise in a DAT recorder and you could use that same technique in a digital recorder as well. And there should not be any cross talk between, between the channels. Okay. Now, once we have recorded this signal, we also need to transfer the signals and usually the transmission rate of the signal or signal transmission rate depends on the number of channels multiplied by the acquisition rate and the resolution. So, the data transfer rate even if it is given in uh, bits per second and acquisition rate in samples per second resolution in bits per second. So, the data rate the data transfer rate transfer or transmission rate rate is the number of channels multiplied by the acquisition rate multiplied by the resolution and acquisition rate it is the unit is samples per second and resolution is bits per sample and the units of data transmission rate is bits per sample oh sorry bits per second. Okay. And usually when we use wireless for data transmission rate we have about the maximum level of 10 Mbps or no, 1 GB, GB. Okay. So, we can decide what would be the sampling uh, rate and this is the limitation of the present day data transmission by signal uh, by wireless transmission as to the maximum data transfer rate available to us and which is about 10 Mbps or 1 Gbps and then uh, this depends on the number of channels of data you are transferring the acquisition rate 
and re re resolution. Typically, the resolutions nowadays people use is about 16 samples per second or 24 samples per second. And the sampling rate for a low frequency signal, it is easier to transfer by wireless. But when we are talking about high frequency signals, you know, you want to uh, sample or send in 10 channels of vibration data over the wireless, the data transmission rate of the present wireless technology is limiting uh, these uh, levels of data transfer. And uh, so, that would uh, conclude our discussions on the signal uh, recording in the analog digital domain and the signal transfer by in the uh, by the wireless. Next. Okay. Thank you.